We want to deal with the book of Exodus. Genesis, Exodus. If you've never read your Bible before, it's the second book in the Bible. Start from the front and start flipping pages. This is the month of Easter when Jesus died on the cross. He was placed in the tomb for three days. The stone was rolled back and he was not there. People didn't roll back the stone. It was already rolled back and he was gone. Jesus Christ. Some of our mindsets is, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I've been to churches all my life and nobody wanted to help me. They were focused on my money. They were focused on my body. They were focused on that. what can I do for the church. Nobody was worried about my issues, my problems. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus was Amen. and still is. He tells you I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. If you're obedient to his word, he will bless you. Amen. If you're disobedient to his word, he will curse you. You can do that all by yourself. It's that simple. There's no tricks to being <laughs> saved. You be obedient or disobedient. You either save or you're not. You're either either good or bad. You're either male or female. We're not gonna mess with that. But you pick. There's no in between saints. Mm -hmm. There's no church folk that can still do what they want to do. They're not church folk. They ignorant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be the first pastor to tell you that. Well, people are still learning how to be saved. No, just follow the Bible and you'll be saved. Amen. He says, don't do, don't do it. Amen. Follow my commandments, follow his commandments. You can't love somebody if you don't know nothing about them. You can't love Jesus if all you know is that he died for you. Why did he die? When did he die? How did he die? But I want you to know today that his blood will never lose his power. Amen. 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 Let's look at some scripture here. Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to try to take my time. Sometimes I do get excited because <coughs> I love teaching. I'm not a hooping preacher. If you're looking for a hooper, this is not the church. I try to get excited, but it doesn't work for me. I'm a teacher. I want to make sure you hear and understand what's being taught. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 27. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. You can just follow along. And it reads this. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go, pick out a lamb or a young goat for each of your families. And slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and the sides of the door frames of your homes. And no one may go out through the door until morning. You cannot go out till morning. Remember that. For the Lord will pass land to strike down the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on top mm -hmm. yes, yes. and sides of the door frame, mm -hmm. the Lord will pass over your home. Mm -hmm. He would not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. Amen. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Amen. Remember, these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. When you enter the land the Lord has promised to give you, you will continue to observe this ceremony. Then your children will ask, what does this ceremony mean? And you will reply, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord. 
for he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And though he struck the Egyptians, he spared our families. When Moses had finished speaking, all the people bowed down to the ground and worshipped. If I could just give you a topic so you can stay with me. Thank God for the doorpost. Thank God for the doorpost. Some of us been in church 20 years, 15 years, 2 years, 6 months, 2 weeks. Today. Whatever long you've been in church, you heard in Sunday school when you were growing up. I know most of us went to church when we were little because we were made. We were dragged out in our little Sunday Easter suits and dresses. We went to church. The preacher always focused in this story on the blood. He always focused on the sacrifice of the animal, taking the blood and striking it across the doorposts and the frames. And saying that this represents the blood of the future lamb, the ultimate sacrifice, the true lamb of God, Jesus Christ. But if I can just deter past that a little bit and focus on the doorpost for one second for this day. The blood is important, but if you didn't have a doorpost, where would the blood be applied? <laughs> if you slaughtered the animal and put the blood in the basin and had the bushel of hyssop and you went to go and do what you were told, but you didn't have no doorpost, what would you do? Somebody give you a gas card, but you'll have... No car. Right. What you gonna do? Right. Somebody gives you a a twelve seat dinner table, but you have no <laughs> dining room. Somebody gives you a car seat for the baby, but you don't have no baby. A lot of times we're given instructions or instruments, but we don't have the tools or the necessities mm -hmm. to fulfill them. In this story, instructions were given out. The people of God, they were slaves to the Egyptians. They were building the pyramids. They were building the statues. I know y'all watch these movies oh, and yeah. biblical things that come on TV. By the way, the Bible comes on at 8 o'clock tonight on the History Channel. Amen. 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 They, were, they were beating. They were making bricks with no straw. and They had to work long hours to make sure that the temples and the land of Egypt looked good and the Egyptians were made blessed and powerful off the backs of God's people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That still goes on today. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. That the world is being accomplished and made powerful off the backs of God's people. Mm -hmm. You saying, well, how is that possible? We all don't can't own businesses. We all not rich and millionaires and we can do and make our own choices. We can. You can still make your own choices just because you're an employee or somebody. You still have a voice. Amen. Amen. A standard still has to be lifted up. Amen. Just because you walk, work for somebody does not mean you don't have a voice. Amen. God will give you a way to speak to somebody. Yes. I share sometimes that on Bible studies. Our Bible studies is at 6.30 and sometimes I work late. But I let my boss know that being a pastor of a church, Wednesday I need to leave early so I can focus my mind to prepare for the people. Amen. I voiced my opinion and my beliefs, and they accepted it. Amen. Why? Amen. Because I'm obedient to the word. When you go to work, you work like you're working for God. Amen. See, you work for God, you don't have to worry about not liking your boss. Amen. You don't have to worry about, can I get a raise, and he tell you no and you're upset. If you work for God, he'll make sure that all your needs are Amen. met. Amen. You saying, but what does it have to do with the doorpost? They worked so hard, and you know the story of Moses. His mother has his son, and they say, you know something? There's a savior in the land. we got to kill all the firstborn. And she gets Moses out. She makes a straw basket, and she pushes him down the river. The Egyptian Pharaoh's wife finds him and takes him in. Look how God works. Moses is raised up by the Egyptians. 
but his own mother is hired to take care of her own son. God always comes back and makes sure things are done in order. Where she, as she nurtured him, as she cleaned him and bathed him while the Egyptian woman was out being her Egyptian self, that the real mama was praying over him. This is your real life. This is who you really are. This is how you're to pray. This is how you're to walk. This is how you're supposed to be. Then they tell you that as he grew up in stature that when the Egyptian men were beating God's people and they were whipping them and being Egyptian, everybody else walked by like, good, they deserve it. But something on the inside right, of Moses right, come on. didn't line up to, didn't line. that's not right, that doesn't work. The person you're beating, they have a connection with me. I don't understand what it is, but I'm going to need you to stop doing that. Amen. Amen. And if I can just paint a picture, it didn't really go like that way in the Bible. I believe that Moses, hey, don't, don't, don't hit that person. The Egyptian said, oh, I'm going to keep beating them. And Moses struck them and killed the Egyptian. Now he was on the run. and He met his wife. He met Jethro. And he was on the run. God speaks to him and says, you're going to be the Savior. Go back and get my people. He said, I can't go back and get your people. I stutter. I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know how to talk. I don't have good English. I, I'm hooked on phonics. I'm talking e-phonics. That's not important. I'm going to send your brother, Abraham, Moses, Aaron. Moses goes back and talks to the people, and he's telling them, God has given me instructions. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's telling them what to do. Tell all the priests to get lambs, slay them, sacrifice them, drain the blood into a basin, and take the hyssop, a bushel of hyssop. Now we use hyssop as medicinal purposes, mm -hmm. for healing purposes. Then they used it for the sacrificial purposes, to draw the blood, to dip the blood. There was a purpose for his of then. That's why when you hear David, he said, purge me with his of. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying, clean my heart. Let me use it for medicinal purpose. Cleanse me out. Make me new again. Yeah. That's yeah. the purpose of it. He says, when you do this, dip the his of in the blood and strike it across the doorpost and the sides. Don't make it cute. He didn't say paint it or dab it. Strike it. Mm -hmm. Puts it on the doorpost. Now, what if they wouldn't have did that? What if they would have drained the animal, had the blood in the basin, and just sat there all night? Somebody would have woke up dead. <laughs> they wouldn't have been there. They didn't follow instructions. The pastor tells you, we're going to pray from 6 to 7. He's not there. She's not there. You pray from 6 to 6.50. You didn't follow directions. Mm -hmm. You have 10 minutes. Parents tell the kids, clean your room. Make your bed up. Put the dirty clothes in the basket. Hang your clean clothes up. Back in the floor. They come in. The bed's not made up. Mommy, can I go outside? Daddy, can I go outside? Ask your mama. Mama, can I go outside? Ask your daddy. Daddy, can I go outside? Somebody let me go outside. But you can't go outside because you didn't make the bed up. All the instructions weren't followed. The doorpost. What does the doorpost signify? One very important thing to realize is how it foreshadows the future shedding of blood. That it protects us from judgment. Just as the blood here protected the families from judgment. We want to talk about today separation and protection. That's the purpose of the doorpost. The blood is going to cleanse us and free us. The doorpost was to separate us and protect us from the world of the Egyptians and the evilness. It was to protect us from the deaf angel and separate us from the Egyptians. Amen. Now, did everybody do it? I don't think so. That's my opinion. Just like church folk. You can be packed out here right now, 30 of us deep. 21 of us will say... We're going to hear this word and be saved. Nine of us are going to be like, man, I don't want to do this. I'll claim to be a Christian, but I'll still do what I want to do. Who's going to make it in? I'm not the judge of that. But our job is to encourage one another to live right. Mm -hmm. 
this is not going on in church today. That if you're sinning, everybody's scared to tell it because they don't want to lose friends. You're a sinner. No, I'm not. You're a sinner. You can't judge me. Yes, I can. You're a sinner. You're evil. You're mean. We had an usher today. How many visitors here were happy with the usher's job? Were y'all greeted? <laughs> y'all good? They raised their hand. Who was the usher today? Oh. Sister Miller? And mother. And mother. And mother. Okay, y'all still got a job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the doorposts. If you don't have no protection... You get beat up. You'll die. When we grow up in the streets and you know you couldn't fight, you were always counting on somebody bigger than you to be around with you. You were always looking for protection. When you didn't have friends, you were looking for your mama, your uncle, Pookie and them, to help you out. When you go to school, you always wanted to hang with the good crowd so everybody knew you was a part of that crowd. That was your protection. If you couldn't fight, you had to give up your lunch money so you get protection. But in salvation, you don't have to worry about that because you are protected by the protector. Amen. You don't have to fight no more. You don't have to worry about meeting somebody at 3 o'clock. You don't have to worry about getting beat up or beating somebody up because God said, I am your battle axe. Yes, yes, yes. He said, I will fight your battles. All you got to do is stand there and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. That's all you have to do. He said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen. Everything that's formed against you is not going to kill you. Amen. It's not going to hurt you. Because God said, everything that's coming against you, you can bear it. Amen. You can take it. Yes. Most of the things that happen to us, we did it anyway. Amen. Amen. I tell people all the time, they, they ask the pastor, oh, pastor, my lights is out. Oh, I need some money. But you you forgot the church gave you the money last week. Come on now. Oh, pastor. <laughs> they went out to the movies and stuff, and I wanted to go. Well, your lights is going to be off. All right. Amen. Amen. See, some of y'all thinking, oh, you a bad pastor. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. I gave them the money. Amen. And they decided that it was more fruitful to go to the movies than have some lights on. So you be in the dark. But see, if you was a real Christian, you won't be in the dark because you was a child of, <laughs> <laughs> of the light. Amen. 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 Romans 12 and 19. Let's get some scripture here. We're talking about protection and separation. I gave you a little background. So now they put the blood on the doorpost. The deaf angel is coming. He's going from door to door. He sees the blood. He passes over. He don't see the blood. They're going to die, the firstborn. Romans 12 and 19. If you need to turn fast enough, you can write it down. I always ask that you write it down. You go home in your personal time, read the scriptures for yourself so you know that I'm not a liar, I'm not making stuff up. When you read for yourself, you get a better understanding. Amen. Do not... If you're visiting and you have a church home, do not take your pastor's word. Tell him I said it. Russell Bowman. I live at 152 Danner Place. Tell him I said it. Do not take your pastor's word. Open your Bible and read for yourself. Amen. All men and women of God are not good teachers. Some want to have tickling ears. Some want to just for their own gain. One person right now is thinking, well, how do I know that person not good enough? Look at the fruit of your church. Are people being blessed? Are people being delivered, set free? Yes. Somebody been there five years and still crazy and sitting? <laughs> Run. <coughs> Are you single when the counselor trying to touch you? Run. Are you growing in your church? Run. Is your church being fruitful? Run. If your pastor's hiding things, run. Our life is an open book. There's nothing you can hide. Amen. I was asked, do I give? I give. You can see it. I'll show you. I'll print it up. Russell Bowman, here's my tithing report. I give. I got to be the first partaker. Do I pray? If I didn't pray, this church would be empty. Do I read my word? I hope so, because I don't have a clue what's going on in this book. <laughs> we have to be responsible 
to one to another. Amen. Amen. Romans 12 and 19 reads this. I usually read out the New Living Translation, so bear with me. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. <laughs> For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. This is what he was telling the Egyptians, um, his people, the, Isra the Israelites. You don't have to do nothing. Believe it or not, if you go back and study, there were more Israelites than the Egyptians. They could have took them out any time. But what happens is when people wake you up and beat you down and they feed you and take care of you, you think you're in that predicament. In prison, if they left them doors, their cell doors open or they think that the prisons were contained and good people, if the prisoner's mindset would say, you know something, there's more of us than the security guards, they will overtake the prison. I hope they don't watch this. Uh, they're like, man, that brother right. That's, sorry. <laughs> but you don't have to fight your battle. Your boss is always picking on you. Pray. Ask God to show you why he's always picking on you. Don't get revenge because what happens is the boss doesn't get in trouble. You do. Amen. Amen. Your spouse is acting up and they calling you out your name or belittling you. You don't have to retaliate. Pray. The Bible says the sanctified spouse saves the other spouse. Yes. If one goes to church and the other doesn't, live the life. Yes. Right. Show them that you're changed. Man. Maybe they might just come to church. Yes. Amen. Amen. But if you say you're going to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday, you go to conferences, and there's no change, you're still cussing, you're still fighting, and you're still belittling your husband and your wife. They're never going to come. Then they're going to ask me, what am I teaching over here at this place? <laughs> Revenge doesn't have to happen to you. Jesus says, when somebody smack you, give them the other cheek. I know y'all not ready for that yet. <laughs> y'all said no. Not there. But I promise you, if you get in that predicament, God has already prepared you. He has. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I know I couldn't come up to anybody in here and just smack them right now. I couldn't do it. Church would be over. But it's going to be the anointing and the power of God already confirming that this has to happen this day. And you'll know it. Yeah, yeah. You can't be in flesh and say it's happening. Revenge is not yours. Amen. God says in the book of right. Peter, don't go evil for evil. Amen. Children of God, we don't do that. You get fired, you don't go back and blow up the building. Amen. You get fired, you go home and ask God, where is my real job at? Amen. 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 You get evicted, you can't get revenge. You should have paid your rent. Amen. That's what happened when you get evicted. You didn't pay your rent. Think about it. Saints, God's people, we always get mad at something we did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We come to church so angry. Pastor, my car stopped. I couldn't even get to church. I missed the word of God today. Well, let's go find out what happened. Get there. He ain't had no gas. <laughs> <laughs> and we lose our salvation. We on the, we on the side of the road, nice dress suit, dressed up, and we just cussing. Ain't nobody stopping. Nobody's doing nothing. And we got all these big bumper stickers and stuff. You got license plate covers. I go to Righteous Living Ministry. Take that off. <laughs> Revenge is not yours. Amen. That's part of preparation. God wants to see, are you really ready to be saved? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Do you really want to be baptized? Do you really want to come from among the Egyptians? Do you really want to come from out of the world? World, in the Greek, it means cosmos. It means the lower part. The world, evil things are there. He says, I want to separate you from that. He said, so do you really want to be saved? Do you really want to be saved? Okay, well, that boyfriend and that girlfriend, that's not your husband or wife. You got to leave them alone. Oh, uh, I'll be back next Sunday. <laughs> do you really want to be saved? Well, you're going to have to stop getting that money the wrong way. That's not legal. Oh, I got this is my income. I, I'll be back. Jesus. Do you really want to be saved? Do you really want to stop stealing at your job? Stop adding more money on your paycheck. Oh, guess I'll be back. 
When you want to be saved, you have to let go of those things that are not of God. Amen. 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 Years ago, they had this thing. What would Jesus do? You can still ask that. Mm -hmm. yep. The thing that keeps me right, I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. but you ask yourself, would he do that? No, no. If you have a doubt, stop doing it. <laughs> People are always talking about, is it okay to drink? Is it okay to drink? I'll give you one scripture with that, and you can stop drinking. Key thing, the Bible doesn't say don't drink. But if you notice, it always talking about wine. It don't say Hennessy. It don't say Cavassier. It don't say tequila. It don't say none of that. So this stuff that church folks are drinking, one scripture. If it offends your brother, don't do it. Don't do it. If you are a man or woman of God and you putting them back, you offend me. <laughs> Can I guarantee you, y'all came to my house and I had some Henny and and stuff? Y'all like, Pastor, that's not cool. Some of y'all said, nah, uh uh. See, y'all ain't saved. Thank God for the doorpost. I'm still on track yes, what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, Listen yes. to this Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. Write this down. Psalms 23, verse 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, my father, my protector, my deliverer, my healer, my sustainer, my way maker. That's all in the shepherd. A shepherd is not the boss over you. He's your provider, your healer, your comforter. When you come here and you join this church, I'm not just... You do what I say. It doesn't work like that. When you're crying and I don't feel like being bothered, I have to be. Amen. When you need something, I have to make a way to help your need. Amen. How do I do that? Show you the word. Mm -hmm. Today, people think churches are there for ATMs and all their troubles. Mm -hmm. But I have to show you the word so you can stand on God. Amen. And not me. Amen. I can't heal you. I can't deliver you. I can't make you a better person. It all comes from the word of God. Right. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Amen. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Mm -hmm. He renews my strength. He guides me along right path, yeah, bringing honor to yeah. his name. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, uh -huh. I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and staff protect and comfort me. God loves you, but he also disciplines you. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes, he he does. says, I chase those he loves. Yeah. Yes, the did. people of God, when they did wrong, he chases them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they came out of Egypt, they didn't want to do right. He opened up the earth and killed half of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't see the same way. Oh, that's the Old Testament. He's the same. Mm -hmm. The law is not gone. It's just fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You can still be jacked up. Amen. We can talk about money. We can talk about healing. You talk about the things in your life. Ask God, why is it happening in my life? He'll give you the answer. Mm -hmm. Nobody never want to ask, what's my problem? I want to see what's wrong with you. What's your problem? You say, why is he talking about this? This has nothing to do with the doorpost. It does. We come in our home today. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. God will make everything right in the face of the people that don't like you. People look at you as an old person. When you was thugged out, when you had all the ladies, when you had all the boyfriends, when you were getting the good. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. But God will change you right in the face of all your haters. Mm -hmm. God will make you new right in the face of all those that want you to stay the same. Mm -hmm. God will change you. Yes. Excuse me. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. Your cup only overflows when you're being obedient. Amen. Amen. Your cup only overflows when you put the blood in the basin and you strike it across the doorpost. Amen. That's how you be free when you're obedient, when you do what you're supposed to do. Yes, yes. You repent. You turn from your evil ways. Mm 
and get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to speak in tongues. You have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Tongues is just the evidence of you having it. Yes. You have the Holy Ghost when you go down in His name and you rise up as a new creature. Yes. You are saved. You are free. You might feel bound up, but you're free. Yes. You might feel sick, but you're healed. Yes. You might still be broke, but you're rich. Yes, you are. But now your mindset has to change. Amen. Amen. All right, now. That you're no longer in Egypt. That the blood has been on the doorpost. He brought me out of the darkness into his mama's life. But we all children of God. We all are right. looking for Him. Amen. Amen. You can be in church 20 years, and this person can be in church one day and walk on water. Amen. Amen. Because they truly believe. Yeah. Yes. You know that when you first get baptized, you tell everybody about Jesus Christ. Amen. When you first get to church, I found somebody new. I love them all my soul. Then we get saved. We've been in church five years. We are usher. <laughs> We the armor bearer. We got a little title now. We can do what we want. I can start drinking again. I can start smoking. I can count the money while I'm smoking. I can count the money while I'm drinking and smoking. I'm the pastor now. I'm in charge. But your mindset is you're still in Egypt. All right now. All right. Your mindset is you're still locked up. I told him on Wednesday, ask a prisoner that's truly saved in jail. Not a ministry of being in jail, but really saved. He can have 30 years, but he thinks he's free. That's right. Because his mindset has changed. Yes, yes. When you think you're free, when you can be broke, but you're rich. You know why? You want to know, how can I get out of debt? You know something? I'm in God. I'm a, I'm a child of God. Now, I want to be in debt. How can I, how can I um, triple or double my money? How can I invest my money? How can I do better? Because your mindset has changed and you want to do better. I want to be a blessing to somebody else. Everybody's always helping me. How can I give? How can I help you? Mm -hmm. You need some shoes? Here's my shoes. Matter of fact, let's go buy you some new ones. Because mm -hmm. your mindset has changed. Mm -hmm. Your sickness, you have headaches and migraines and diabetes, all these different things in the world. But you're in a hospital bed laying on your deathbed and you say, but I'm healed in Jesus. Yeah. 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 down your nose. Yeah. I beat your arm. But you say, I'm healed by the name Why? of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You say, he's yeah. my Bob and Gilead. Yeah. Why? Because you're no longer in Egypt. Amen. You're free. Amen. Psalms 24, verses 24, uh-oh, verses 1 through 10. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. Can we get that across? Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord's, the world and they that dwell yes, therein. Amen. Everything on this earth is God's. Amen. Amen. I don't care if your name is on the mortgage payment, God helped you get it. Amen. You say, I broke my back to get it. Me too. I work every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have it. Y'all just don't know. Lord, Lord, I got Lord. a testimony. On, I wasn't born with a Bible in my hand. I wasn't born with a clergy shirt on. Oh, I was raggedy. I was nasty. I was thugging. I was selling drugs. I did it all. Amen. They're very preaching before you, and I'm not ashamed of it. Amen. Amen. Only God can deliver me from that. Only and I love everything I did. Only every. God. I didn't do it for money. I like doing it because I like nice stuff. This is why folks are not delivered in church. <coughs> this is why people are still in Egypt in church because they like what they do. God is more powerful than your life, but you want to hold on to that thing. That thing you like, it's been delivered, but you walk back out and take it with you. That's my next message. Holding on to dead things. All right. All right, now. All right. All right. Come on, next one, I'm working on it. Listen to this. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swore deceitfully. 
you can't go before God when you live in dirty. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The world says they ride dirty, but church folks live in dirty. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that this man is living right and this man is not, and God is hearing both prayers. That's not a fact. Mm -hmm. I can show you a scripture. He hears him, mm -hmm. but not you. That's right. That's right. You can't tell me that you got four boyfriends and you're faithful to yours and God is hearing your prayers. He's not. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you today, if you never heard it before, if you're living foul and you know it in here right now and you're listening to me trying to shut me out, you live in foul. Amen. Right. Your mind is still in Egypt. Amen. God is not hearing you. You're not being blessed on your own recognizance. You're not receiving the favor of God. It's your own fault. You're not being healed. It's not God. It's you. Ask God, what are you doing? Ask God to show you you. The evil witch always asks, who's the most fairest of them all? <laughs> Go to your mirror and ask God, who's the most deceitful of them all? He'll show you you. Because you have a form of godliness. But you deny the power thereof. Another version says, you deny the very anointing that can change your life. You can't be in church a thug. You can't be in church with four boyfriends and four girlfriends. You can't be in church and, and stealing and robbing. And want to work and lay hands on people. A sick person can't heal a sick person. That's right. The Bible says, why would Beelzebub want to get rid of his own buddies? They're not going to do that. The Navy is not going to fight against the Navy. Our military is not going to fight amongst ourselves. We might shoot one of us by accident, but we're not going to just deliberately kill ourselves. We're not going to do it. We're going to go to Afghanistan and fight. And fight the enemy. But we're not going to turn ourselves. That doesn't apply. Listen, lift up your head, O ye gates. Mm -hmm. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. Everlasting doors. And let the King of glory come in. Oh, who, is this king? who is the oh, King right. of glory? All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't want to finish right. reading, but if you don't know that, you can't walk this thing out. Mm -hmm. How can you clap your hands and pray somebody you don't know? You don't know. about the word because he saved me. Amen. 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 I sold drugs, but he never let me get locked up because he knew I was only five foot six. <laughs> <laughs> he saved me because he knew I was messing with too many ladies and I was going to get stabbed one night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I, I thank him for? I can say this to all the thank brothers you, that's Jesus. out there with too many women. I was riding dirty as a young man. I can thank God I never had an STD. Amen. Right? You say, wow, you share too much. Man, they teach y'all kids that. Yeah. If they don't, you better teach them. Because yeah. they have a baby at 11 now. Amen. 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 Who is the king of glory? Hmm. He's the one that changed your very life. Amen. He's the one that pulled you out of the very pit yeah. that you were walking in.
you got to be true disciples. Everybody couldn't come out of Egypt because everybody wasn't obedient enough to put the blood on the doorpost. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 23. Not everyone who calls out to me, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, not everyone who says, Jesus Christ, not everyone who says, Jehovah Shalom, not everyone who says, Abba, Father. You know, we get deep. We, don't, we just don't say Jesus. We got to get deep. <laughs> Elohim. <laughs> Jehovah Tiskinu. Yeah. We got to get religious. We'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. You can name all the Jehovah's you want, but if you ain't living right, mm -hmm. it don't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. I don't care if you know more than me, but I'm living right. Amen. I'm trying to live right. Amen. I'm acting right. Amen. I'm talking right. I'm doing right. Yes. Amen. Say it. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. You don't know if I'm going to heaven or not, Pastor. When you die, don't ask me to do your funeral because I'm not putting you there. <laughs> I'm going to preach to your family that's still alive. I don't put people in heaven. I don't care if you was in church. I don't know you. Were you living right? You can be on your deathbed. You know what you were doing. We know how we're acting. I give you a challenge. If you're on your way out, if you know you're about to die on your deathbed and you are living dirty, this should be your last words. God, forgive me. Well, I have I'm a sinner. <laughs> All right now. Change me again. All right. <laughs> so I can make it in. Amen. All right now. He knows the intent of your heart. Right. You remember the thieves that was on the cross next to yeah. yeah. He said, hey, bro, don't forget me. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, no, you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't repent. He didn't say a moment of words. He said, don't forget it, brother. But all we knew was he was a thief. But Jesus knew his heart was sincere. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's the difference. You said, well, you put me in hell. You put yourself in hell. Your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We come to church. We on praise teams. We sinning. We fornicating. We doing dirty. We riding dirty. And we want to come and give God the glory. It don't work. Mm -hmm. This is why churches are bound up. This is why churches can't be free. This is why churches are closing up. Amen. This is why things are happening in the world. Because Christians, we can't take a stand if we don't be, believe in the stand. Amen. Amen. Listen, only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will <laughs> enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied, we preached, we laid hands, we cast out demons in your name. I healed Sister Philly in your name. I ordained Sister Tammy in your name. I did this church in your name. And you know what you're going to say to me? Bowman, I didn't know you. You was a heathen. <laughs> when the church doors were closed, you had another girl on the side. Right. You were stealing church money. You wasn't trying to be no pastor. You didn't even own the Bible. You don't read the Bible. You don't pray. You don't do nothing. Depart from me, you evil little short self. <laughs> I had to use myself because I don't know everybody in here yet. And I want y'all to come back. But we think that we're living so holy. We put on these suits and ties and we want to look so dignified and we look like church folks. But on the inside, you just like the heathen. You got on your $300 shoes. You got on your $80 Sean John shirt, fresh with a fresh cut. You still nasty. You still dirty. And then you're going to get to the pearly gates. You went to church every day. You paid your tithe. You gave the church your hard earned money. That's not going to buy you in the heaven. You're going to get to that gate and he's going to say, he's going to push a button. Down. Because you weren't ready. Coming out of Egypt. Let me give you two more scriptures. Y'all ready to find out about the doorpost? Here we go. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. Amen. Write that down. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. And my last scripture is 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. 
Second Corinthians chapter six, verses fourteen through seventeen. It reads this: Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can you be buddies with somebody that don't believe like you? If you have on a Redskins jersey, you can't play on the Eagles team. And gangs, if you're blood, you're not going to wear blue. If you're a crip, you're not going to wear red. Where I'm from, we didn't have that. We had the west side and the east side. If you wanted to go to the store, you didn't go by yourself because it was on the east side. You would look and you would go to the store. Whatever jumps off in the store, it jumped off. That's how I was raised up. It was that simple. If they want to come across to the larger mat and stuff, we were sitting there just hanging out. What y'all doing? We want to wash clothes. You better go all the way down there. This was real. This is real talk. This is how we were raised up. You can't be buddies with somebody that don't believe like you. Even in church, if you're trying to live right, this is the live right side. That's the unlive right side. So if y'all want to switch, you can't right now. Y'all trying to live right. And they're not. You go tell them, y'all not living right. Tell them. Tell them y'all not living right. Y'all not living right. right. Oh, okay. <laughs> but see, somebody is going to respond and come to the side. Or they're not. You can't help nobody that don't want to be helped. Amen. Take the blood. Put it on the doorpost. When I come, you will live. If it's not there, you will die. Here we go. Righteous, how can righteous be a partner with wickedness? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the Bible. This is not my opinion. How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? Amen. For we are the temples of the living God. God said, I will live in them and walk among them. Yeah. I will be their God and they will be my people. Listen, let me stop for a minute and give you a quick quick one. He says, I will live in you and walk among them. How he do that? If he's in you, how he walking among them? Because he's in you, you're doing the walking. Amen. So you can't do dirty if you're the temples of Christ. Amen. If you're the house for the anointing, for the power. For the glory, forever and ever, you can't do dirty. I told him one time in the club, and I promise this is my last scripture so we can do communion. I want y'all to see something. I want everybody to know, if you go to a club, don't raise your hand. But I want you to see something so you think about it. If you say you are a Christian, you are a man or woman of God, when you go to the club and you at the bar and you get your drink and your favorite song come on and you in there, you just like... <laughs> And you doing your stuff? I want you to know God is there with you. Yes, yes. Because you're the temple of Christ. So the next time the young ladies, when y'all see that guy you like, you want to take him home, you talk about something. God is there with you. And the fellas, when you there, you like, oh yeah. God is there with you. I know some of y'all mad at me. I took the enjoyment of the club. Good. Yeah. You have Jesus Christ in you. Right. It don't work. Next time you sit there, it does not work. But look, if he's in you, how are you not being convicted? How are you not being convicted? How, you, how does it okay for you to go do that? I get mad at one of y'all, and I'm, I'm crying, and tears going down my eye. But y'all can go clubbing, and it's okay. That's not fair. That's right. <laughs> my last scripture my last one 1 John 2 15-17 here we go do not love this world nor the things it offers you for when you love the world you do not have the love of the father in you for the world offers only cravings for physical pleasure that's it you write these bad checks <laughs> So you can go and handle your business. That's only made you feel good, but now that check done bounce. 
your check your checking account is overdrawn, you have to go to that check cash in place and get their money back and then you owe them in two weeks. That was the only last for a moment. Man, they got quiet up in here, boy. <laughs> Somebody's like, thank you for telling me. For the world offers only craving for physical pleasure, a craving everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from the world. Amen. And this world is fading away, mm -hmm. along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what God pleases will live forever. Y'all ready to come out of Egypt? Amen. You say, I've been in church all my life. I'm not in Egypt. If you're in church and you're still bound up, you're in Egypt. If you're in church and there is no manifestation of God's blessings upon your life, you're in Egypt. If you've been in church for a long time and your thoughts are still bad, you're in Egypt. If you haven't seen God change your heart, if you're still cussing, if you're still mean, Forget the cussing, the smoking, the drinking, and fornicating. Everybody talks about that. Let's talk about the mean Christian. Let's talk about the one that's a compulsive liar. Let's talk about the one that you think is your buddy, but they stab you in the back. Let's talk about those Christians. Yeah. Everybody know you having sex. Everybody know you smoking and drinking. We can smell it when you come into church. But we can't see you being a liar. Only you know you're a liar. Only we know you're a backstabber. But in the spirit, we can see you're a backstabber because the blood is on your hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know why you're still in Egypt? Because we're not obedient. Mm -hmm. You took the sacrifice and you killed the animal. Mm -hmm. And you drained the blood into the mm -hmm. basin. Mm -hmm. And you had the hyssop ready, but you didn't apply it to the doorpost. Amen. Amen. You didn't apply it. So now we're in church. We're obedient to the pastor. We love the first lady. We come to church. We get here on time. We give our money. We pay our tithes. But when God comes, we're still dead. We're still asleep. We're not being delivered. We're still walking with chains on our hands and feet. Why? Because you didn't apply the blood to the door close. Yes, the blood can cleanse us and make us clean again. But you forgot to use the door post. The doorpost will separate you and protect you. Yes, yes. Do you have a doorpost? Do you have a doorpost? So you apply the blood. And you sit there. There you go. Ignorant Christians. Don't leave your house till morning. You hear the screaming. You hear the crying of the people when their child was dead. Ignorant Christians. Oh my God. Is that Mary? Her son dead? You dead. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't go outside don't go until go morning. Outside. Mm -hmm. We're not obedient. Mm -hmm. We're not obedient to the word. But I want you to say, thank God. For the door post. Thank God for the door post. Because he brought you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. He separated you from evil. When you go to work and you see those car accidents and it just missed you because it was God. Thank you for the door post. Thank you for protecting me. When you see your little girlfriend, they out there having babies at 14, and you like, thank God for the door post. Then I listen, I applied the blood, you protected me from the evil. When God takes you to good churches where you can be saved and live right and get delivered, thank God for the doorpost. Yeah. You said, but the power is not in the doorpost. Yes, it is. Because it's obedience. Mm -hmm. We know the deliverance and the cleansing is in the blood. But if you don't apply it to the doorpost, uh -huh. it doesn't make no difference. It's just, it's just sitting there being blood. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can have a Bible. If you don't read it, you don't know what's in it. That's just a Tammy's husband. That's his wife. They've been married a long time. He don't know her favorite color. She don't know his favorite color. She don't know his favorite food. Wow, y'all been married that long? I guarantee she know his favorite food. Right now, guarantee. Yes, she do. I guarantee he know what her birthday is. 
Because if he didn't, he won't be sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> Same way with Jesus. There's some of you sitting here right now. You know about church. You don't even need me to tell you about church. But you're saying, you know something? I understood what you were saying. I'm in church and I do what I want, but why be in church all your life? <laughs> And bust hell wide open. Yeah. That don't make good sense to me. That's like me being back here preaching and just having a double life. And then we all in church one Sunday and all y'all disappeared. And I'm still here. Paul said, I preach the gospel, but yet I myself. That's crazy. I tell them, if all y'all disappear and get caught up and I'm still here, I'm going to find my way to get caught up and beat everybody down. Because you know why? Because the Bible says be helpers one to another. Right. Encourage one another. Right. It's not just my job to tell you you're a sinner, tell you you're wrong. It's everybody's job. Oh, Sister Mila, she's not my friend no more. She, um, Because she told me I'm living, that should be your best friend. All right, now. Your best friend is going to be the one where you say, I don't want to leave Egypt. They feed me three meals. They give me a place to stay. Your best friend is going to help you grab the hyssop and put it on the doorpost to get you free. You're here today. And you say, you know something? I haven't been in church in a while. I've been contemplating it. I want to change, but I don't know how to make that step. If you're here today, you made that step. Amen. You wasn't Amen. invited on accident. God, you should thank the person that invited you. Amen. Because God spoke to them. It had nothing to do with you joining this church. You don't even have to join this church, but get back to God. Get back to God. Get back. Find you a church that believes the Bible. Yeah. Find you a church that is going to help you get delivered. Help you remove your circumstances off your life. That's what you do. But I tell you this. If you don't want to change, don't go to church ever again in your life. Don't waste your time or God's time. Amen. Because God said, I love you either if you're hot or cold. He said, if you're in the middle, I'm going to speed you out. See, if you're cold, he can deal with you. He's like, I don't, you don't want no part of me. If you're hot, he said, you fired up. But if you're in the middle, if you're being a phony saint, he, gonna, he don't want no part of you either. You just you wasting his time. Just go out there and live your life. But when judgment day comes, don't say he told me. That's right. You're gonna take communion. But to those that's thinking in their mind, it's hard to be saved. You can't have fun no more. As anybody in this church, I'm the craziest preacher in San Diego. <laughs> Might not have the biggest church yet. But I'm crazy. I love to have a good time. When the church doors are closed, I let my hair down. <laughs> I love to joke. If you like to crack jokes, we can go head to head. I love it. <laughs> Playing video games, got a pool table at the house. We like to have, we love people. You can have fun in church. You don't have to sit and have fun. You say you like drinking. I'm going to tell you right now. It's not fun in that. When I got in the military, I had to start drinking because outside the military, I smoked weed. They yeah, did me. Little old me. But you couldn't do that in the military, so you had to drink. You know what drinking got me? Now, don't take this wrong. I love my kids. Drinking got me a son and a daughter. Drinking got me, I'm not even with the baby's mamas. Drinking got me waking up the people. You're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's what alcohol got me. Alcohol got me captain mad. A alcohol got me kicked out the military. That's where I, nothing good comes from that. Fornicate, you know where that got me? Nowhere. It got me leaving a pair of clothes here, a toothbrush at this house. I never had my own place, but I had a place to stay. <laughs> my whole life was like that until I came to church. I had clothes in everybody's house. Hey, I'm coming over. Not because I have a place, I knew I, they were going to tell me yes. But somebody invited me to come out of Egypt. Thank God for the doorpost. Amen. Amen. You say, but what is your doorpost? The person that invited
led you to church could be your doorpost today. Amen. That could be your doorpost. Today, if you know Jesus,